in my mind cultivating the utmost quality and artistry in everything is what everyone should be doing all the time so whether you're putting something down or lifting it up you're really doing the same thing you are this is my one fix talking too but you're refining and leveling i'm saying by saying i hate something or saying i love something i'm still telling you who i am they're not different welcome to another episode of what it's like to be you i am josh levine your host today i'm sitting with joseph salteri the one of the founders of enneagrammer.com and the person who wrote all of the written content on enneagrammer.com including their written typing test He's also one of the three masterminds behind Dark Arts Academy, which is Enneagrammer's offering where it's like a subscription offering where they teach you how to type people and you can watch them type celebrities in real time. It's really quite an amazing thing and their method of typing is extremely innovative and fascinating. Joseph types as a social sexual four with a three wing, four, six, one trifix. And this conversation was really, really interesting from a lot of points of view, but I want to frame up the conversation from a particular angle, and that is the object relations angle of frustration. So object, if you're new to the Enneagram or if you're new to object relations, object relations is a theory that basically talks about the primary or most fundamental relationship that you have with quote unquote objects in your environment or other people. Object relations is an incredibly rich theory and is kind of the, what you discover all the way at the bottom of the Enneagram. It's the fundamental structure of your psyche, you might say. I'm not gonna try to give a masterclass on object relations right now. It's just too complex of a theory to cram into a short introduction to this video. And the important thing here is the interview. But what I recommend is that you go listen to Big Hormone Enneagram, the podcast has done an extraordinary job of unpacking and bringing fresh insights to what object relations really is. I do wanna say that type four is a frustration type in the heart center. And what I mean by that is that I conceive of frustration types, which are one, four, and seven, as being constantly engaged in the ego project of trying to decontaminate myself from impurities in the environment. And type one is doing that through the body, type four is doing that through the heart center, and type seven is doing that through the mental center. When we talk about Joseph's attitude of disdain towards everything, <laughs> um, as you'll see, um, that is really what it means to be frustrated in the heart center. The heart center being fundamentally concerned with issues of identity and who I am and how I'm seeing myself and how others are seeing me, which I express a lot of times through what I like and don't like. Joseph is an incredibly articulate person um, with respect to his own inner experience and the Enneagram itself. And so this interview, I think really just speaks for itself, stands on its own. So without further ado, please welcome my friend, Joseph Salteri. Welcome everyone to another interview. I am really excited to be with Joseph Simone and or Joseph Salteri, um, you pick. <laughs> and so <laughs> Joseph, as I'm sure you know, is one of the Enneagrammer folks who's do his, uh, who runs Dark Arts Academy. And you also are the person who has written all the content on enneagrammer.com as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So I'd just love to start with how are you feeling right this moment? Fine. Um, I'm looking at my face and realizing this isn't my color. Um, <laughs> looking at myself. Um, also, yeah, I did. I wrote all the content, but and some of it's really good. So let's say I wrote that, and then the one, the stuff that's not good, let's just say that someone else wrote it. Okay. Um. Probably, some, <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's fine. <laughs> some of it, some of it needs to be revised. Um. But yes, I did write the content, and that's not even something I'm good at. It was painstaking. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, I'd love to hear. I don't think I really know this fully about you. Your Enneagram origin story. How did oh, yeah, it sure. land in your life? Yeah, go ahead. <clears throat> um, you know what? So I was just, ever since I was, I think in like grade 12, we took a some test to match you with your career or opportunities, that kind of thing. And I remember just being really fascinated by this and the choices that I got. Um, I did not become a director of photography, but still the quiz was cool. Um, and then I, I realized that uh, I think at some point also we had to do the like Myers-Briggs test or something like that. And, um, at school, 
Yeah, or maybe it was in university. I don't know. I don't remember. But sure. I remember okay. that first yeah. career test. I think I just, from that point on, I started to get really into Myers-Briggs. Like, that's what I started with. I think that's what a lot of people start with. It's kind of an accessible thing. Um, and I got really, really into that. It was just really fascinating to me. And then um, I learned about the Enneagram. Uh, I don't know. Again, it was like in, you know, there's some cross pollination or whatever in the in the two communities and I learned about the Enneagram and started reading about that and um I bought books which were crap um or that's not fair I mean there's some really good things in some of those books but let's just say the stuff on four at least is is not great um mm -hmm. I can even empathize with that because how many fours will you meet in order to write a profile about them um mm -hmm. So, you know, but anyway, um, I bought some books. I think I typed as a seven because I was the, all of that frustration stuff in seven I related to. And a lot of the four stuff really just sounded like nine. I don't have any nine anything in my typing. So I had no mm -hmm. feeling for that. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, then, you know, I think I was I originally typed as I think I started to type as four eventually. Um, and then I was typing as like sexual self press four and. John and Emeka were like yelling at me in one of the groups because they were like, you're not, <laughs> not social blind. Um, and then Emeka, re so I made this website, which is like the early, early kind of incarnation of what the website is now with all of this content that I had written. And it wasn't, it was uh, not the, even the same content. It was, I had like compiled, I'd read every single Enneagram book and I compiled all the information, all the types and put on the website and Emeka found it and messaged me and was like, is this your website? But I was so, I think it took me months to answer him because I was so nervous because I was like, my website's shit. He's going to tell me it's shit. And I could sort of, I knew that he, I didn't know who he was, but I could tell by what he was talking about in the group that he like knew what he was talking about. And so I was like too embarrassed to tell him that it was my website. And then like several months later, I finally was like, yeah, okay, it's, it's my website. And that was it. We started chatting and I sent him a collage and he was like, dude, you're social as fuck. And, um... Yeah, I don't know. We just kind of made friends and he was already friends with David. And um, I don't know exactly how one day we I think we just we we made a group because we realized that we were typing people and I was learning typing from them and we were all kind of whatever. And we made a group and we were like, well, we should name ourselves. And then we were like, you know, we should start charging because when we were giving mm -hmm. typings away from free, I mean, it was a lot of work and people were just screaming at us and leaving anyway. So um yeah, that, that's sort of it. I was I started with Myers Myers Briggs, and yeah. I just was really really fascinated by personality typing. And when when I started to talk to Emeka and David, I realized, and I started to type correctly. I mean, I still had my trifix wrong actually, but I started to type correctly, and I that's when it started. This is why it's so important to type correctly because if you don't, you're just gonna walk away. There's nothing there for you. It's gonna just dissipate. But when I started to do it right. Um, and learn how to type from them and start spotting the types, then I was like, okay, there's, this is, this is everywhere. It's like seeing, I don't know, yeah. a new layer of life. So, except yeah. that you didn't type correctly and it still stayed for you. Yeah. You know what? It didn't stay. I think, unless I'm trying to think I typed as like seven, four, one. So I wasn't even that far off, um, for, for some time. And then I typed as four, seven, eight. Um, because I had social sexual correct and because I had four correct, I mean, it was enough for me to, to dig into that. And because sure. I had, okay. I could, I was typing other people in my life correctly and like learning about the types. It, um, mm -hmm. it was enough to keep me going. And the, I mean, the problem with four is that like, again, there are just so few of them that we were shaping and learning what it was even as we're still doing that. You know what I mean? So me typing as four, seven, eight seemed right at the time and then you know it wasn't you know it was just like well actually this yeah. is not you know we started because it's it's just we don't know I don't, we don't know what other i don't even know if we have a 478 now anywhere on our list i don't even know what that looks like i'm trying to think we don't so isn't i thought marlon know. brando was a 478 874 he's he's, he's 87 okay four. yeah we have the trifix yeah. but we don't have like the a trifix. core four yeah. okay yeah so you know we don't have there's so many four combinations we have no reference when we're typing like you know, another nine seven three with the exact overlay. We can be like, I oh, remember those those other samples and and call mm -hmm. on them and be like and compare. But we can't do that with four. So, you know, I'm I'm kind on myself for for mistyping my trifix because I really had no, I had no clue 
what it would look like in another trifix. Sure. Um, I have, I just, I have a real curiosity about you, um, personally, because your content on any grammar is really, really good. And your Thanks. facility with language around this stuff is really good. And even in your dark arts Academy videos, I mean, you're just like a fountain of like, you talk fast images, yeah. metaphors come to you quickly mm -hmm. and you're, you're just facile with this stuff. And it's the result I imagine of a lot of work, you know, I mean, this is probably my three point of view, but it's like you had to spend a lot of time with this material to, to develop the level of competence that you have. And I'm really curious about what it was that drew you to it and why it grabbed you so much. Yeah. You know, honestly, I, I don't even, I don't know. It's, it's, uh, it's almost like, I don't know, like I'm, I'm a pianist. I love classical music and to try to analyze yeah. why I like it is like, it's sort of some kind of magnetic thing that just, you just, and, and I'm, I don't know, the type of person that changes a lot, you know what I mean? Like I just, well, like I'll try a lot of different things, a bit of a polymath, but this stuck, you know, the piano stuck, the Enneagram stuck. And I think, I think what's interesting about the Enneagram is it combines a lot of the things that like, I love categorizing people and observing people and analyzing people. I've always liked to do that. I don't understand people who are just like, oh, I don't know, I got upset. And it's just like, yeah, but why? Why? Let's talk about it. Like, all I want to do is talk. I don't want to, I don't want to give them therapy. I don't want to help people. I don't care about helping people. I just want to analyze and understand and, you know, <laughs> categorize people, right? Um, so it helps me do that. Um, I also like to, I'm trying not to use so much OPS language because not everybody will know what I'm talking about, but I like to like play, so to speak. So I'm just like playing with ideas, bouncing them back and forth, seeing things, spotting patterns, and then just that's it. You can leave them there. Um, and that's just sort of what you do with the Enneagram. Or like we're constantly co-creating the system and finding new patterns. And, mm -hmm. and you do that by watching people. And yeah. I don't, yeah, I don't know. It's like this creative discovery with interesting patterns and you get to it's you get to talk to people and also it's about analyzing behavior and there's okay also i'll say one thing like you definitely don't have to have a reactive or like four fix to be interested in the enneagram but at least the way that you know me and mech and david do it is that like that the, the fact that there's always like that i that i can look at someone and be like you're doing this ugly thing underneath and that's what i that's what I see in people. It's not that I see all people as ugly. I think the world's a good place or whatever, but it's just like, but when people are acting on insecurities, like, I don't know. I, I mean, an example, like a type like seven, for example, I, I love sevens. Mm -hmm. They're so much fun and they're, they're so entertaining, but sometimes you have a seven in your presence and you're just kind of like, whoa, like you need to chill. Like, are you okay? Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah, then, yeah. You, then you start, see, you start seeing the negative side of even the people that entertain you. Right. And that's what the Enneagram like gives me and I can just like play with it and see it. I'm going to even have to do anything about it. I'm not here. I'm honestly so not. like I'm, a kind of food for you. It's like a nourishment. Yeah. To, yeah. A hundred percent. And so, and, I, and I'm not here being like, you know, we all have to be better and we have to work on ourselves and stuff. And I don't give a shit. I honestly just think this is really interesting. And, and because I know all this stuff about myself, I do work on myself, but it doesn't feel like work. You just uh -huh. do it because you're like, oh, I'm like, I'm reacting to that pattern again that's gross i don't want to you know what you just will do it so i don't like yeah. attaching this like super ego thing to to like the work i don't even yeah, like calling yeah. it work i'm a four i don't want to work i don't work but like when you know all this stuff it doesn't feel like work to me so i guess that's my answer is like <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't feel like work which is why i was able to 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 work at it yeah and be this proficient that, yeah that thing you said about you know you're upset underneath and why? Why are you upset underneath and not understand and not understanding why people wouldn't want to care about that? Mm -hmm. I think that's actually, in a sense, the spirit of my question to you around the Enneagram. Like, right. what is what is it? What is going on? Like, because partly, I mean, my fascination with you is that you have a an attitude of disdain towards. <laughs> um, <laughs> Well, everything, but also even the work itself or yes, almost like any That's grammar true. itself or something. It's like, <laughs> you know, and, and so it's like, that feels like a kind of, 
um, say it like this. It's well in image language. It's like um, maybe that's that's part of the the thing or the could be part of the image. This is a dart of the board. You tell me if I'm right. But it's like part of the the image that you are cultivating, um, or like it's a porcupine uh, needle or spike. But there's some core like deep caring about this it feels to me that's like underneath the porcupine needle yeah i mean i i joke with a i have a friend who's 964 and we always mm -hmm. make jokes we both love to go to fancy restaurants that we absolutely <clears throat> cannot afford um but you'll be sitting there and <laughs> she'll take a photo of me and she's like you look disappointed and i'm like good because what i want <laughs> what i want <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. We we she I mean it's funny she's better because she's got a four fix she's better at like looking at it and making a joke about it than I am like it's, it's for me it's just like all serious but um she says it's like she's like I what I want is to be disappointed in excess like I want to have every pleasure placed upon me but it's not quite enough which is frustration um yeah but. I think also the thing to know about fours, at least four wing threes, because I can't, I guess I can't speak for John or four wing fives is that um, this kind of like disdain or frustration or whatever, like, I don't know how to put this. It, it is just a natural resting state. So if I'm being disdainful or whatever about something, I hate everything, everything, everything's everything around me, every person I meet, it's all just instantly go to hate. And then I sometimes let things surprise me. And the Enneagram keeps surprising me and keeps making me interested. But I know up front I'm going to hate whatever you, you give me. It's just not, it's not going to be interesting. It's not going to be enough. I, I'm going to be like, I don't want to be part of this. There's this thing with four where you're not, I try to, I'm trying to use the language, but it's, I just don't want it to sound nine-ish, but you're like, what's the i'm not even part of any of this so why should i engage with it at all it's not yeah, even me um so mm -hmm. but it keeps surprising me and it keeps impressing me and making me happy can you can you frame that in a in a way or is it is it is, would it be authentic to you to frame it in a way that the enneagram is affecting you at a heart level as opposed to a head level because a lot of the language that I'm hearing you say is like, it's interesting to you, it's fascinating, it excites you, it surprises you. It feels a lot of like mental energy. And yeah, and you're a four True. with a three when you're a heart type. And so I'm curious mm -hmm. about that. Uh, so what's your question? Sorry. <laughs> what was, yeah, my so question is, it again? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, my question is, um, well, the language I used was something like, would it be authentic to you to frame your fascination with the Enneagram from a heart point of view? Or what oh. is it? What is it? How does it, how does it touch your heart? Or does it touch your well, heart? Well, you know, mm. the thing about the heart types is that their heart's blocked. Like it's not that we have this idea that the heart types are emotional, but I actually, this is, I mean, this is my personal, like I find, I don't know, like sixes to be extremely emotional. I find nines to be extremely emotional, but I, I think that, the heart types are all creating some kind of heart image in a way that actually makes it so that their real heart isn't, I don't always speak with heart language because I don't think I'm always aware of what the real heart, you know, John has better language for this because I'm not the inner work guy, but like fours are not like emotionally open. It's, it's probably, it's the, in a way it's the, it's almost the driest emotionally of the, not dry. I don't know how to explain this. Um, I don't think fours are emotionally wet and open the way that we imagine them. I, I don't think okay. that that's true. I think they're actually very guarded. And because they're not allowed to be heart connected to anything, they block it. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. then I think, you know, at least in my case, I you, you kind of go to your second center. I mean, I have a secondary six wing seven fix. It's loud and it's whatever, right? But um, you're not really, you're not really, I'm not really feeling, I don't know. I'm going to pause that because I'm not sure how to finish that statement. Does that make any sense? It does, I but I I, my curiosity is still kind of peaked in this direction. Because I because I think, well, I mean, I'll speak for myself. As a three of the four wing, sort of your specular image, it's, um, yes, I experience my heart being blocked on a, on a regular basis. But, but also, um, when my heart is touched, it's the most important thing to me. It's the most precious, mm. the most salient, mm -hmm. the most like juicy thing ever. And 
um, what got me into the Enneagram was when I took my first Enneagram class, it was like the first time I really ever felt seen. And that idea of being seen in the heart center is like so important, so special. And um, so I guess I'm just kind of opening that doorway to that general explanation for you. I don't think I want to be seen. I don't think I believe that anyone could see me. I see. That's the f- that that's the four yeah thing. That's it right there. Yeah. That's of course I do. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Like I've, I'm, yeah. 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 But I don't. And so mm. fours often maybe not even attracted to the enneagram because the idea that you could that some description or whatever could know you is like I'm not a part of it. I'm not. That's you can't see me. You don't understand, right? Because then you're. Mm. It's really hard for four because now you're just <clears throat> opening up this this thing where you're like, oh, everything I do is inauthentic. Um, is there anything like a, a, a secret hope or desire that's like very guarded that is like, I want to be seen, but just the, the expectation that you're going to be disappointed because no one can see you. That's kind of how I feel actually as a through the four wing. And I wonder um, for you. Yes, but mm-hmm. In I've, it's narrowed into very specific funnels. Let's say, I expect, like, there's three people maybe on this planet that I would expect to. To see, me. okay, like when I, so there's very few. If I really open up to a person, I re, or I, I look at a person or a thing or, or whatever, and I'm like, this is actually not disappointing to me. This is great. Then yes, I want to be seen. But because 99% of everything is just kind of base level disappointing, Mm -hmm. I don't care. I don't ball. It's not even interesting. I would be offended if one of those people or whatever said that they understood me or saw me or just be like, oh, okay. Um, (laughs) But if something that, you know, Uh, that is ridiculous, but it's true. Um, So, and I I mean, but I think in terms of the Enneagram, I don't know. I'm I'm trying to, I, I think, I think in a way the Enneagram is a heady the way that we do it is very heady. It is kind of just like, let's play with ideas. Um, Sure. Yeah. So. Yeah. Hmm. What in your life um, feeds your heart or is there something? You know, I don't even think about that. I don't think about my heart. Anything about heart makes me want to vomit. Um, I, I, um, sort of, I guess my instincts, but, um, I really music. I think I yeah. can, I've said that like, I, I don't cry in real situations. I cry when I'm listening to or playing music, um, or, or watching like a movie or something that's really affecting me. So oh, art okay. makes me cry, but not real situations. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so that, um, but you know, there are these like moments where, the people I really care about will do something and it does catch me off guard. And I'm almost like, Oh, sh-, like I'm, I want to cry or I want to smile or laugh. And that wasn't the, that wasn't what I wanted or I'm going to, I'm going to sound too sweet or I'm going to sound too nice and I can't have mm-hmm. that. It's not, or whatever, like I need to be stiff or so this is, a, you know, like a one fix thing too. It's, it's a whole, sure. um, but yeah. those are, yeah, those are rare, you know, the people in my life that I really care about will, will sometimes break there but yeah i mean with art yeah yeah i'm really quite raw that's you know, interesting you could, yeah. yeah you could find yeah. me listening to like a string quartet and i'll be like bawling or like jumping around the room or whatever but like if we're having a conversation i'm not going to give you that right right yeah um what's let's talk about music so you're sure you're you've been a piano player your whole life yeah mm-hmm and that's something that is in the same category as, <clears throat> at least as I'm considering it, any grammar for you in the sense that you've really devoted a lot of your life energy to cultivating musicianship. And it's right. something that you, that continues to be a thing that you care about. Mm-hmm. A thing that, maybe another way to put it is a thing that continues to surprise you. Is that, would that be a fair way to put it? Yeah, absolutely. Or something that, ke- that keeps getting in past mm-hmm. the film of skepticism or disdain or whatever. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it, um, 
I guess it's interesting because, you know, maybe because you're three or because most of the world is a three fix, but people often talk about this stuff as like you cultivated, you worked, you did this, you did. And I, I can't even stress yes. how uh-huh. little I, you know, and which is fine. It's, but I, I can't even uh-huh. stress like I, the second that something is work, I throw it. I just don't, don't, I don't want to do this. Um, yeah. Yeah. But yes, I, I have spent hours and hours of my life, days, every single day and since, until I was, since I was like five, playing classical music at the piano. And I did that only because it was like pure bliss while I was doing it. So w- if there were moments where it was like, you know, you, you, you can play this, but you really should be drilling. You know, most pianists, I would say, are self press social nines, right? Because it's like they can sit there and drill and do that building block self-present because it's kind of like okay you have to practice this one passage over and over and over again and i'm like i'm not doing that Mm -hmm. um but because i loved music so much i would just play all the time so i still got good um but it was not work it was not any kind of conscious cultivation at all it was just very much like i just want to do this um Mm -hmm. and i still want to do it And it's the same with the enneagram i'm literally just like you know, any grammar is work. We have to do work. We have to answer emails. We have to be whatever. But like, really, it's not work. Like, it doesn't feel like work. We've set it up. And we all kind of know this. It's, I mean, a lot of four fixers, I think, are the same. It can't be work. It has to just be like fun or whatever. Or I don't know. Fun is the right word, but something that's just feeding you. What, yeah. What's the, what is the right word? Um, like pleasure, maybe. Hmm. Interest, interest, intriguing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is music something that you share with other people? And like, do you play for other people or with other people, or listen to music with other people, or is it solo? Yeah. So, so I, I, this is, I guess, this goes back to the question that you asked me about being seen, because this is maybe a good kind of uh, mm-hmm. example. But I, I learned when I was young that like audiences were trash and that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Well, like I'd be learning, you know, I'd whatever, be learning music and like my aunts and uncles would be over. My parents would be like, play something. And I'd be like, no, like I don't, I don't, I don't just perform. I'm not like a, like a monkey with the symbol. Like I just, I don't do that. And then, but at the same time, there was of course a desire in me to do that, but I would do it and they'd be talking or something during it because people don't know how to listen to classical music. And I'd be like, this is disgusting. I'm never playing for you again. Um, so on one hand, yes, I want people to listen to me and I want to, to, I don't know, be validated or whatever. It's just really nice when something that you're doing is received. Um, but most of the time people don't really know what they're listening for. Um, so sometimes, you know, if people in my house, my partner or whatever are listening to me and, commenting whatever it feels really great because it's like oh you know i'm it's it's like nicer to cook for two right it's just better to to have somebody else experience this with you and like you know but um for the most part no i just like to play by myself or you know i could have i could have done stuff like play the piano at weddings but like i don't care about people's love and their bliss and the stupid dumbass songs that they want at their wedding that i have to play over and over again whatever it's not i just want to play what i want um, and I would love for somebody to hear what I want and enjoy it. Um, there are just very few scenarios where that's going to happen. And, you know, I'm good, but I'm not qu- I'm not quite good enough to be, I'm not like top 10 pianists in the world or whatever. And that's pretty much what you have to be to have like a concert career. So, um, right. so I'm not doing that. But I don't want to do these like gigs <clears throat> where I'm like, I don't know, playing at someone's wedding or a funeral or whatever. It's like good money, but like, I don't, I don't care. I don't want to be background shit. Um, one of the ways that I conceive of the Heart Center is it's about how people are paying attention to you or gazing upon you or like the qu- the quality of their gaze. Mm-hmm. And um, gaze as an abstract term, but like the way that p- someone's paying attention to you. And so if someone mm-hmm. is, like you're playing music, which is very personal and precious to you, and they're not mm-hmm. paying attention to talking or something like that, it's like, that's a miss. It's a heart miss, you know? The music is um, me. It's the only thing yeah. that... Yeah, so you're not seeing me, you're not, yeah, right. Mm-hmm. What happens when someone, like a partner or something like that, is really listening to you when you play? Oh, it's great. You know, that that that's very disarming, and it makes me pretty ecstatically happy. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's very nice. I can imagine. Yeah. 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 Hmm. Um, why classical? Um, you know, I don't know. I, I think I just, 
I really just liked it. I, I think that, I don't know, I'm going to, I'm going to talk and someone's going to say that what I'm saying is like Eurocentric or whatever, but um, I just, I just really love classical art music. I think it's the best music. This is my opinion. I mean, everybody can have their own opinion. I don't care. Um, but mm. I just think it's um, some of the most complex and special music that I've ever discovered. And I like lots of other music too. I love like, I don't know, I like electronic mm. dance music. I mean, there's all kinds of other things that I like, but um yeah, just from a young age, I had a piano teacher that was a uh, Lithuanian. She was from Europe. And so she was kind of raised in the classical tradition and she started to give me some scores and some music. And I don't know, I think I started, I started by discovering Beethoven. I have a tattoo of him on my arm, social sexual. And um, I, I just ripped through him. I still love him now. Again, that's, I mean, he's sort of like, if I have a, an idol or a God or whatever, cause I don't have any, it would be him. Um, because his music just consistently overwhelms me no matter how many times I listen to it. Um, and there are some other composers as well, but yeah, it just, I just took to it. Um, I don't really like jazz and I, you know, I don't want to play pop music. Um, yeah. I just, honestly, I, just, I mean, the simple answer is I think it's better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's better. Yeah. This is, I'm not sure how what the question is going to be in this, but it 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 feels to me when you're, when you're talking about classical music, it feels like, you know, that's a that's a sincere love of that thing, you know. Mm -hmm. It's it's not yeah. it's not an it's not an image per, that you're projecting. No. I mean, it could it, no. it's like it could end up being that it becomes part of your aura. Right. You know, I'm a classical piano yeah. player or something like that. You know, um, sure. But, um. How do you do? You, let's see. The, where I'm trying to go is like splitting a hair between when something starts as an authentic, like sincere love, right. and then it becomes part of your image versus when it stays in that like um, maybe more pure place. And pure is a complicated word in that context, but you understand what my question is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's yeah. A, it's an interesting question for hard types as well. And again, I think uh, I mean fours and threes are different in the sense because threes have this like amazing ability to like achieve things even if they don't even like what they're doing sometimes, you know what I mean? Like you can be three that's like on top of the world and you're like, you don't even like this. Um, not always, but like threes are so good at just doing that yeah. they can, you know, that's not, that's not an ability I have. So I can say that like, oh, you know, being a classical pianist sounds um, like I'm part of the aristocracy and that makes me, fit. it suits my image or whatever. But like, no, I do sure. this, I do this by myself. Like I don't, I don't care it is mostly something that I experience on my own, that I do on my own. It is so genuine. It has, it, it will get conflated with the heart center, with the image, all that, because everything does. But at the end of the day, when I look back on my life and I right. look at the things that I just keep doing, no matter what, I know that I don't even have the freaking ability to do something that I'm not really interested. The image, it's not enough. You know what I mean? Like, do I really, really care about this? If I'm still doing it, and like you said, it's like a ton of work that I don't even feel is work, then it's true. How much, in terms of, in this conversation around image, does your, um, let me just pause for a second, because this, so this question I'm about to ask is kind of like, in the context of image, um, are there things that you love that, just don't fit the image that you have of yourself or that you're trying to project. And then by contrast, are there things in the reverse direction that like do fit your image that you just don't really like that much, but that you kind of do anyway for your image? Yeah. That's an interesting question. I got to think about that. I mean, yes, the, mm -hmm. for the first one. Yes. I mean, there are things where I think I can make it, like, I mean, for example, I've, I think I've made jokes about, like, Harry Potter because we've, we've typed J.K. Rowling, whatever. Harry Potter is basic. Sure. It's whatever yeah. it is, right? It's Harry Potter. But I like them. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't like, yeah. I mean, but I have to, I guess the way that I make things fit my image, and I'm not, this isn't images, it's the honest truth, is that I have to chisel. It's like, I don't just yeah, say yeah. that I like something. I say I like it, but also I'm aware that it's this and it's this and this is why it's yeah. good and this is why it's bad and so on. Okay, so it's fine. So I can like it. You know what I mean? Um, But yeah, there are a lot of things. Like, for the most part, again, I don't know. It's difficult, right? Because part of part of four and one is like constantly chiseling and striving for everything to be at the highest level of quality. But it's like I I do that because I 
feel it. Like, I don't know where one ends and the other begins. Like, I don't need everyone to see that I'm eating the best gelato, but I still want it and I still enjoy it. You know, but I still don't want Chapman's. So, um, do you have Chapman's in America? <laughs> I get no, I don't. But I get the. Okay. I'm guessing it's like a shitty ice cream brand or something it's like just, that. Yeah, it's nothing. <laughs> it's, a, it's like those boxes. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, whatever. You know, like so. I don't. I, it's yeah. <laughs> it's hard to say. I don't know. It, it, like, I think I think the thing to say is that like a lot of this stuff is so deep that it just kind of is who you are, even if it's like not who you are because it's a type and blah blah blah. Like this is just me. Like I don't know if you take all this mm -hmm. stuff away, I don't know what's under it. Um, again, maybe that's a question for John in her work. I don't know, but like this is, I I put a lot of effort into finding everything. I was just thinking too, as we were, as I was about to, I, whatever, just changing my course of direction here. But the thing about image is it, nobody has to be watching you in order for you to like do things, right? Like, you know, like you, you could just be like, you could just like, just do something and no one's looking and you still, you're feeding your own image, right? Right. Yes. That's I was just gonna ask that question is like right. when you so when you say the statement I like J.K. Rowling, mm -hmm. it's like if there's a person in the room versus if there's not a person in the room, the experience of you admitting to yourself you like J.K. Rowling isn't necessarily that different. Is right. kind of what you're saying? Yeah, because yeah. because what's like what's happening inside? It's like you have the thought yeah, I really like Harry Potter, <laughs> you know? Yeah, and then <laughs> and then what? Then you're like ew. Um, do I, and then why do I, you start analyzing cause you're like, that's not, that's gross or I don't know. You know what? For the most part, when it comes to art, I don't know if that's the best example. When it comes to art, I'm, I like what I like. I'm not going to be ashamed of liking something. I think for the most part, you know, if there are some shitty, whatever things that I like, and it does cause some like inner discourse, like why do I like this nineties dance Euro song or whatever? But I'm like, Oh, it's nostalgia. I can always reason my way <laughs> out of like the things that don't fit, you know? Yes. I just had a thought. I'm not going to be fast out with this line, but that feels like in the Gurdjieff work, the mixing of the center or the scrambling of the centers kind of thing, head center doing the hearts job kind of thing. Right. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's inner work like for you? Or like when you say that you, well, actually just period question mark. What's it like? Yeah. I, Cause you said the W word. Um, you, <laughs> work. <laughs> actually, um, no, I was thinking, <laughs> like, I uh, no. I'll, I'll, you go, you go, you go. <laughs> uh, honestly, I don't, I do not ever consciously do any kind of inner work. Um, yeah, but I know that I do. Um, I know that I, I don't know, you have a disagreement with your partner. You're not just like, I'm, I'm just kind of like, okay, I'm, I'm applying everything I know to this because how can I not, um, taking some space, figuring out. So that, that is inner work. That's like, okay, you know, this isn't, this is about me or what's my problem. What can I do about this? Who am I? All that stuff. That's inner work. I'm not doing it as some kind of strategy or whatever. It's just more like, well, when you have knowledge, you're going to use it. How can you not? Mm -hmm. You know, you'd have to purposely mm -hmm. block out knowledge. So that's pretty much what it means to me. I'm not here trying to, I don't know, transcend anything. I don't care about any of that. I don't care about spirits. I don't care. I just, you know, I think having this knowledge is interesting. And I apply it because I think that's what we do when we have knowledge. Um, do you have a spiritual... Um, orientation or did you grow up in any kind of way religious or um, does it function in your life? Yeah. I mean, you know, we were sort of Italian Catholics, but no, I don't mm -hmm. have any spiritual, like, and actually a lot of the spiritual stuff about the Enneagram just makes me like, what the hell are we talking about here? Sure. I don't, I don't know. Okay. It's very, yeah. I've had this conversation with David and Mecca too about like the spiritual side of the Enneagram. And I'm just like, I don't, there's a block here. I don't have any hmm. concept of this. It's not interesting to me. I don't care. I don't, this is, I never got into Gurdjieff. You know, I, I've, I've read about Gurdjieff. So I understand, you know, I want to know the origin of the Enneagram and all this stuff, but like, I don't, it, it starts to lose me. I don't know. I'm not interested. I'm, I'm really interested in playing with people, like not physically playing with them, but playing with 
the ideas about people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think that's why I'm good at typing, honestly, because that that is. I can see it's like its own that. skill. Yeah. You know, you just have to be good at it that is, thing. Yeah. It doesn't mean I can't do the spiritual thing on the side, but it's like this is not what this is about. It's about. I've often had that thought people. that that the three of you aren't, in a sense, distracted by um, the need yeah. to empathize or the need to to, to have a yeah, spiritual <laughs> self image. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah um, totally. And that kind of softens the um, the sharp edges of the enneagram in a way that you guys you haven't dulled those those edges um, through some kind of um, <laughs> inner work or spiritual um, yeah. orientation. You know what I'm saying? I find that really interesting. Yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, I I really don't care what about like I I don't want to help people. I'm not saying that it's because I'm. I'm selfish or I don't care yeah. or whatever. Like I'm, I'm like a yeah, good person, but I literally, I just, I don't have the gene in me. That's like, I want to make sure everyone's on the right path. Like I, I don't give a shit what path you're on, like get out of my face, but it's, I do care about giving people, like I do like giving people typings because it's like setting a bomb off in their house. But like, if they use this properly, it's going to be bombs, not the right metaphor. I May mean, fire some, <laughs> <laughs> because the like the fire, I don't know, like the fire is going to burn yeah. down old shit and then new shit's going to grow or something. I don't okay. know. Just okay. somebody make up a metaphor, you know, like because you, you can either I like it because you're either kind of like, you know, getting a typing is like it can be like, whoa, you know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. huge thing that yes. overhauls. Yeah, yeah. It's very, you know, even when I found out I had a six fix, I didn't sleep for like two days. It was just huge. Um, but um, I like that because I like those peak moments and i like being able to to give that to people again i don't really care what they do with it of course i want them to do something positive with it because why not um but if you use this the right way it could be the most important thing that ever happens in your life mm -hmm. um but really again like that's cool but my motivation is just that i really like typing i like the feeling it's like people who like answering math equations it just makes you feel good when you got it or like doing the wordle in the morning i like typing it's like a it's like my wordle you know yeah 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 something you just said is <clears throat> is interesting to me that when you when you found out you had a six fix it sort of um overturned your world oh my god yeah um what else has done that for you in your life anything else <laughs> like not any gram related <laughs> or uh, yeah any something that's like just penetrated through whatever psychological barriers to um totally change something for you like i don't a know clear before and after um no i don't know if i can think of anything uh mm. specifically you know, i've had big things sort of happen to me in my life like romantic things breakups whatever things that were that felt really cataclysmic and mm -hmm. you know changed my whole perception of something but yeah, no i yeah. mean i think you know the enneagram is the only thing that's that's made me feel that way where i'm literally mm -hmm. my eyes have opened to a new you know whatever yeah yeah, yeah. i can't think of anything else hmm. okay yeah um i have a totally different topic yeah go ahead um i'm curious about your journey um and i know you hate that word but i'm gonna use it anyway um as a um as a gay man and like when you came out and from the point of view of being um a four versus i think um where i'm about to go with this or just kind of give you the punchline up front is i think that type three is an attachment types in a sense have to come out of their own closet whether or not they're gay but there's a sense of like coming out as myself and like Okay. Clarifying and excavating myself over the course of time. Okay. Like yeah, I remember yeah, when I, I you know what I'm saying? There's a, mm -hmm. there's a clear metaphor there. And I think the gay community is inspiring in this way. It's like personally an inspiration to me, even though I'm not a gay person. Um, but the, I was, I'm curious about what it was like for you to come out as a four and your relationship with the image of being gay as a four. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, I know that's a good question. Um, so, you know, I was lucky to be able to come out in, in a generally positive environment. Not everybody gets that. So, you know, as yeah. awkward, it was very awkward. Yes, because it was, it was, um, I came when I was young. I came when I was 15, 16. 
That's yeah, the other thing. I, okay, yeah. So there's the, the four things too is just like yeah. There you go. Yeah. I wasn't. Yeah. I, and I knew like it was before that, and I just was terrified. And I finally was like, okay, like I honestly don't because there's this thing. I've, I've said this about attachment versus hex set. There's this thing where you're like, it's not possible for me to adapt. So yeah, why am I going right. to say something if I'm looking at you and saying something like, you know, I, I have long lustrous hair. I'm, I'm, that's how much of a lie it would feel like because how could I possibly pretend that I don't? I don't even know how to do that. I don't have that ability yeah. at all. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Um, I, you know, I did. Um, but I'll say, you know, I've had a lot of, um, and I actually, I've, I've also say I, I've had a lot of the people that have been activists and have come out first and the sort of stereotype of what a gay man looks like is seven. You know, David actually said this to me yes. years yeah, yeah. ago, and I was that like, yes, because right. Seven is a hexad type that is assertive and positive and fantasy. They're the ones that are just storming out. And the and rainbow being flag. Like, the rainbow flag, exactly. Yeah. There's so many. The word gay, you know, he, that was David's yeah, idea. Yeah. Right, um, but right. Uh, it's great because those are the people, those are the people that are bold enough to be exactly who they are and amplify at times a thousand to the point where it's obnoxious or whatever, right? So mm -hmm. on one hand, I understand that. But on the other hand, I have had a lot of trouble like, not even trouble because I don't know if I can. I think when I was younger, I did want like, you know, when you come out, you're like, okay, well, I'm, I'm still social. I want to be a part of some gay community. Like maybe there's, you know, some, but like I'm constantly feeling like I'm not because I don't like clubbing and I don't like partying and I don't like rainbows and I don't like, I don't like a lot of that humor. I don't like drag queens. I don't like a lot of the stuff that like everybody just sort of attaches to, so to speak, because it's like what gay people do or whatever. So um, mm -hmm. I've tried though, because, you know, part of, part of my, I guess, inner work that I maybe I'm conscious of doing is trying not to avoid things just because, you know, I just to be like, Hey, you know what? You might not hate this. Try it just, or like go into it, you know, like go to a drag right. performance or just do something like that just to see, you might not hate it. Um, but I hate it. So <laughs> that's it. But yeah. yeah, that's, that's kind of the, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Well, I'm curious about, so you use the word community, which is a really interesting word from, I mean, it's yeah. a social word. And also it's a word that is complicated in the context of type four because yeah. of, well, feelings of belonging and things like that and being mm -hmm. frustration and, and not liking things and, you know, all that stuff. I'm curious about your experience as a, um, well, do you feel like you belong in the gay community or, I mean, get all the, the list of things that you just said that you'd hate, <laughs> you know, um, you get my point um, or, or my question? Yeah. Um, yeah. no, I don't. I mean, this is the thing. I don't subconsciously all the time. I don't feel like I belong anywhere in anything, even in mm -hmm. my home, nowhere. Right. Um, yeah. but re consciously, I think that. I can see that I, I, I don't, I don't have a lot in common with like the culture of whatever's mainstream. Um, but that there's no such thing as belonging in the gay community. It doesn't really mean anything besides your orientation. Um, sure. So, and I don't, again, I don't even, I don't really see it as a community. Like I said that because I think there is one there. Like I it's one of those words that like, he's yeah. like, I don't know. It's weird. Like I don't, I don't even think about community, but then I'm kind of aware that like, okay, yeah, I guess there's a community here or whatever. Like I'm sort of aware of it, but also rejecting it at the same time. It's a weird relationship I have with that whole idea because I do, I'm social and I have a secondary attachment fix, especially six, six is like super community based and tribal. Um, but I'm also like, <laughs> I'm trying to think of an example so I can really kind of like open this up for you. Um, I don't know. I think when I was younger, I'd be like, okay, I'm going to go to this like bar or something and had this idea that I would kind of go in and like, cause I get this social FOMO and like feel some kind of sense of community. But like the second I go in there, I'd be like, no, I'm uncomfortable. I hate this. I don't want to be here, but this is gross to me. I don't, I'm not, I'm, we have to leave. Um, and when I was, even when I was in high school 
or even elementary or high school like you know how you know how you do that thing this happens more when we were younger but like you you're you'd be hanging out with a friend and she's like yeah like i just i want to bring like my three friends that's cool right and you're like no it's not fucking cool i don't like any of those people like i'm just right. so so i i'm how to put, i'm aware of the sense of community i just need to be the one who's creating it and it's small and specific and I don't want to say elite because that makes it sound like this is about like status or money. It's just about like, who do I think is interesting? And when you're talking about public communities, public spaces, that's never possible. Yes. Um, yeah. I understand. Yeah. So that That's, I think that's kind of what is happening with my idea of community. I do want one. I used to have like little parties when I, I am social sexual. I had parties. I had groups of friends. I made up nicknames. I haven't have my own special language that I speak with my friends. It's ridiculous. I'm not going to talk about it, but I do. It's very, all these little kind of social sexual things, but I'm, it's very much like you, you, no, 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 no. And then, okay, you're here and close the door. And um, mm -hmm. this, I can allow myself in this space. And even in those spaces, I will get moments where I'm like, Oh God, um, but for the most part, I can feel comfortable in those spaces. And like, I do want that community feeling, but it's extremely specific and even still generally disappointing. How do you feel towards the Enneagram or universe community? <laughs> it's like, I hate them. They're all shit. No, um, <laughs> I, I don't interact much. It's hard. I mean, I don't know. It's hard because... I'm no longer in the group. Like I'm running the group. So, mm -hmm. um, I can't, uh, act the same way or I don't know, whatever interact in the same way, I guess. But, um, I think there are some people in this community that are extremely brilliant, like really. Mm -hmm. Um, and I really like, uh, reading what they have to say. Um, yeah. and here and there I will interact, you know, um, mm -hmm. But I feel about this community, here's the answer. I mean, I feel about this community the way I feel about any community. It's the same kind of thing. Um, mm -hmm. I don't walk out into the common space. Yeah. You know, it's not just because I'm like, I'm better than you. It's just kind of like, that's not my place. I need to find my own wherever, you know, like space. And maybe yeah. some people in that common space shouldn't be in the common space and they should be here with me or whatever. Um, but I've had to learn over and over again through my life. You can't do that. You can't just walk into a common space and say, you, you, not you. I don't like your face. You know what I mean? You, you have to just, you have to just do these. I mean, you have a staff party. It just has to be everyone. You know, you have a group of friends and that girl you hate's there. She just has to come because she was there and she was listening. And it's just like, you know, that's, I was really rude about those things when I was younger because I didn't understand that it was a problem. I'd just be like, I don't like, I don't want her to come. I just wanted to be the two of us. Even if it was another mm. friend that I liked, I'm like, no, this is our time. It's just the two of us. She doesn't mm. come to this. And people would be like, what's wrong with you? And I'm like, I, this is just, I don't understand what's wrong with you. How are we all? We're all just in this space. Now nobody's really, you know, we, we went out uh, in New York, all of us. And it was amazing because I had never met you and I had David, never even met David and Mecca in person. And I, right, I had actually right. met John once. <clears throat> I never met Alexandra. Hmm. So it was really cool. But I was also like, one, well, I'm not... I just want to sit down and talk to David or just to Mecca or just to totally. whatever. I just want to sit yeah. down and have a conversation, but I can't because we're all just, now we're all extremely interesting people, but we're all just kind of like in this like, you know, community, this like, like the more things that you add, the more it just is like common denominator, even with people as interesting as us. Um, yeah. So yeah, I'm sorry. I'm just, I, my mind is not linear. I'm just kind of like riffing on whatever comes to my mind here. So I don't know if that even well, I get it. I mean, I, I, I mean, I'm pulling a couple threads out. First of all, there's the sense of like what you're maybe craving as a social for is the sense of a quality of refined social intimacy. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And, that's right. um, and that's possible in a one-on-one -on -one context because you can yes. sort of, you can go somewhere with someone, you know, or like, a container is small enough that it's not going to get infiltrated or contaminated by yes. yeah, 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 by yeah. Yeah. by uh, some other elements that you didn't invite in, you know. And it's a different. It's interesting. It's like we talk about boundaries with the body sensor of the eight, but it's like um, there's a certain kind of emotional or social boundary that you're you're wanting to set up here that is impermeable. But it's totally a, it. Yeah. it. Yeah, but it's a kind of it's a fantasy. It's not actually possible to yes. have an impermeable boundary, right? And that's yes. partly what sets up the disappointment of the of the force structure. No, and the fantasy thing that you're saying is really important. Um, 
because you know yeah four seven and nine are fantasy types um mm-hmm. the impermeable boundary permeable boundary is a fantasy but also the idea that i could possibly find even if there were a boundary we had a moat the idea mm-hmm. that there is actually something as good as i want there to be or whatever that i can actually put in this moat is also a fantasy Mm-hmm. Right, I'm living the fantasy for fours is that they aren't supposed to be in the common space. The common space is for everybody, and I'm a human being, right? But the fantasy mm-hmm. that's consistent with fours is that I'm not over there. I'm supposed to be. I'm over here. I'm somewhere else, right? And that's a totally mm-hmm. unconscious. That's how you open your eyes every day. But that's a fantasy. It's not real because we're right. all just the same. Really, we're all people. I'm saying those words is disgusting to me, but it's true. We're all just the same. We're all people. We all have the same stupid types and feelings or whatever. There's nothing that you know really separates me from the crowd and or anyone else. Um, so, but and that but that's the four fantasy. And I try to you know, I idolize people who I think separate, like, you know, Beethoven, for example, this is somebody who is a Titan of a person in my mind, but he still just is a person. Yeah. When you were participating in public forums, I, okay. Partly this question is about to be about like, you were participating in public forums on the Enneagram before you created Enneagram or an Enneagram or universe. And I'm interested in the difference between participating in a public forum that wasn't your space that you chose to sort of like have some comments on versus a a thing that partly you helped birth and is technically yours in the sense that it's like, this is a community that you created, helped create. Yeah. Um, they, they really aren't different because at the end of the day, this forum is still an open group. Like, you know, I mean, we, Mm -hmm. we kick out people if they're like, yeah, yeah trash or whatever but for the most part we want people to just be free to like just enjoy and you know do whatever mm-hmm. they want so it feels the same but i would say before i was looking for david and emeka so to speak i was looking right. i was like yeah. hey who am I? I you know so i was participating in ways that were even kind of gross to me but just because i was like i need to you know go out and find you know david has this whole system where he talks about the social instinct being the the search and then the sexual is the finding and self pres is the nesting or something <laughs> yeah, whatever sure. i don't I there's know. something yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's something about social where you're like i have to go outside i have to look if i want to find that ideal that fantasy social ideal mm-hmm. i have to go and look for it i don't have it yet so i have to put yeah. myself out there and i'm not i'm good at doing that if i have to do it um okay. yeah that's interesting but now that i found it itself. i don't need yeah. to right yeah. now i have it so yeah is that hard for you to, I mean, as a withdrawn type to, and, and it's ha- like, what, what threshold inner internally do you have to cross of loneliness or frustration be- to, um, before yeah. you have enough life force to like, okay, I'm launch. I'm going to launch myself out there. I, the, the one thing about frustration is that it's an incredible motivator because you're just like, there's nothing else that you can see or feel except the thing that you're frustrated about and want. <laughs> So if I want something that badly, which honestly, that's not hard. I want things that badly all the time. There's always something that I'm desperate for. Um, and that feeling will make me, like, I'll get it. I'll just do whatever it takes because it's all I can think about, you know? Mm. Um, so if this mm. is something that I really want, I really want to get, I want this Enneagram knowledge. I wanted to know more than anything. So I was like, well, whatever, I got to go out there. I have to look, I have to find, I have to just do it. I um, have to right. find every book. I have to study with this teacher or that teacher, or whatever. It's like not even, it's like brainless almost. You just do it because yeah, yeah, yeah. when something triggers, and I have two frustration types, when something triggers that level of frustration, it's, I don't know, there's not, that's what you, that's what you are. That's your whole mm-hmm. consciousness. Yeah. Yeah. What's attractive to you about having an image of being disdainful? I don't know. I don't even think I, honestly, I mean, this idea of having an image that's being disdainful, I know I talk about it yeah, a lot. Yeah, is that even talk not the right question, in a sense? No, no, it's, I mean, it is, I think it's true, but it's like, I was not conscious of that at all. This is the thing, when you type, you, like, I mean, I didn't know. 
like I thought <laughs> there are many times when I was in like early twenties and I'd go on dates and people would be like, you're really rude or you're really, or, you know, you, you seem like you, you were, I don't know. It'd be like some DJ or something. They'd be like, you're so like negative. And I'm like, huh? I am mm-hmm. like, I, I really, it seems crazy, but I had no clue. Um, mm-hmm. So I don't think it's something that's attractive to me. Cause it's so, again, these things are so unconscious. I don't sit there and think about like, I want to make sure I look disdainful. I, it just is there. It's just like my whole thing. Well, but, but also, <clears throat> I mean, I don't know, 30 minutes ago, you were like, you know, somebody took a photo of you and she was like, you look disappointed. Oh, yeah. you look good. <laughs> right, you know, right. that, yeah. that sort of thing. Right. Okay. So yeah, now I guess at this point that I'm conscious of it, what's attractive about it? I don't know. I guess it just, it feels, it feels true. Um, I think I, I was, I mean, she said, you look disappointed in the photo and I was, cause I was sitting there and I was like, this is good, but it's nothing's ever quite enough. I think it's because, yeah, the truth to me is that nothing's ever enough. That's the truth about life. Nothing's mm-hmm. ever enough for me. Um, so if that's coming across, then I guess, I, I don't think I liked it when I was younger. I think I, I didn't like it because people didn't like it. And I, well, most people, I don't care what they think, but there were people I'd be like, oh, I don't know why, why is my mom telling me that I, I'm, or you know what I mean? That I'm, my dad's a seven. So he'd be like, you're, you're being negative. And I'm like, I, oh, you know, I didn't, I didn't like that because I didn't really want to upset my dad. Um, I was just being myself. Um, but now I guess it's just like, well. I guess it is what it is. This is how I look. And I think, I think it would feel very inauthentic to me if I were presenting an image of like upness and positivity and joy. That's, it's interesting to me the way that you're framing this because it's not like a, like the idea of disdain is not a thing that you were like, Oh, I want to cultivate this. It was like, the idea is that it's, what the way it happened was well you're used to the word true it feels true mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. interesting to me like this is who i am in a sense right so in a sense i mean does partly I, okay i'm just revealing my own perspective here as a bermuda 3 it's like the idea of me cultivating an image of disdain or coming across as disdainful or some kind of way it's like that is beyond a some internal threshold of polarizing that is like, I I just don't know that I could sustain it there. I could maybe do it for like five minutes or even not not even that. But like the idea of this being a lifestyle and when a photo is taken of me that I want it to look to stand for or Mm -hmm. appear disappointed. It's just, it's fascinating to me. And so, because it's different from my experience, but it feels to me like this idea of it's, it's just true to you. It's like a way of revealing yourself. Right. You know, yeah. Yeah. It's right. That's, it is a way of revealing yourself. Right. Because at the end of the day, I mean, no, I wasn't, I'm never consciously trying to think of this, but when here and there, if someone says something like that, it might trigger some feeling of like, oh, you know what? Yeah. Okay. That feels right to me in some mm-hmm. way that if you're mm-hmm. saying I look disappointed or you're saying, I don't know, it's, it really depends on the context because there are people who've said that and, and, and it's hurt my feelings. Cause I'm like, I'm not even disappointed or I don't want to look like that or whatever. Right. But, yeah. um, I just know now at this point, you know, this happened, that thing, it was happened recently after I knew I was a four, so I'm kind of more conscious of it, but I just know now at this point that I'm like, why would, I mean, if that's what's showing up in pictures, then that's what's real. So it's, I guess, so I guess it's true. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Is there, I don't, yeah. Is there a different quality in, um, when you have a reflex and you're like, oh, jazz is trash. Um, yeah. Or, you know, and you just, ugh, like, that, I hate that thing. Yeah. In a sense, I'm getting from you, like, that it feels real, and so that's what you're saying. And yeah. that's it. But is there a different quality of revealing yourself when it's something like when you're talking about classical music and it's something that you really love? No. I think it's the same. That is fascinating. That's really interesting. Yeah, I mean, they're both... um, I guess in my mind, cultivating the utmost quality and artistry 
in everything is what everyone should be doing all the time. Mm -hmm. So whether you're putting something down or lifting it up, you're really doing the same thing. You are, this is my one fix talking too, but you're refining and leveling. I'm saying by saying I hate something or saying I love something, I'm still telling you who I am. They're not different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you ever catch yourself saying something that you later reflect was inauthentic? Yes. Yeah, you know, there are times here and there where I might... The answer is yes, but I don't know if I have an example for you at this moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have to think about that one. As a three, I mean, this is where the question comes from. Is as a three, I um, I used to lie a lot when I was a kid, and mm -hmm. it was just like weird and ridiculous and about things that didn't matter. You know, it was just yeah. a reflex. It was a kind of habit that I got into. Mm -hmm. I remember when I was seventeen or something, I was <clears throat> sitting on a bench looking at a lake or something like that. I was just kind of reflecting, like, why do I do this? Yeah. You know, and um, yeah, it wasn't until later and when I learned the Enneagram that I really, 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 really started to look at this. And every once in a while now, I'm like, I'm 35 now, but it's like every once in a while, I'll catch myself slipping back into, a, like, I'll just uh, having coffee with someone and oops, something slipped out that was, I'm trying to, I, I would love to give an example because I think it sounds like nefarious or horrible. And this is my image since we're yeah. talking, but it's like, but it's like, <laughs> no. yeah. um, it's 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 really in a sense um silly and innocent <laughs> it's like uh, someone asked me what i did this morning and i'm like oh i you know all of a sudden i'm saying to the person i just i did my laundry but i didn't and it's like why would i even say that and it's like <laughs> um you know what i'm saying it's uh, and it's so yeah. um yeah. and it's kind of a it's a signal to me that i'm not centered you know and so that's when i that's when i know i need to get back on the pillow and start meditating or or something like that or like feed nourish myself spiritually in some kind of way and i'm curious if you have some an analog to that you know what i mean a lot of that i think really is just social too because i think that we mm -hmm. even me we are sort of taught to i want to do social right too right means authentic to me and blah 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 like exactly how I, if i want to be annoying i'll be annoying if i want to upset people if i want to be nice i want to you know what I mean? So like I, I do have, I want to have the, so sometimes somebody asks you a question and you're just like, I don't know how many times somebody like, hi, how are you? And I want to be like, I'm shit. Um, but they're, you're just like, yeah, good. How are you? Like, I don't know. And they're just like, what the fuck did I say that? For? But um, <laughs> yeah. so we, we, we do a lot of things just to kind of like keep a social, you know, ball getting thrown back and forth kind of thing. Like we're, you know, just, okay. I said the right thing. You said the right thing. Okay. Done. Like we do that. But um, I'll say, I don't lie like very often. Like I'm not going to say I don't lie because like everybody lies, but like I don't, the truth is so much more interesting. It's, it's upsetting. It's real. And I was a really bad liar as a kid. My sister's a nine and you know, she's quiet, but she's the one that would lie to my parents. Well, um, you know, my parents, I would just, I would just tell them the truth. Like, I don't know. Honestly, I'm going to do this. Like, this is what I'm doing. I don't know. Yeah. I just, you know, and, and I like telling people, I don't really, the thing is, I don't actually relish in hurting people's feelings at all. But I, I also think that like, in my mind and my reactive type mind, the truth, whatever it be upsetting or not, is always something that everyone's going to want. And if I'm telling you the truth, if I'm being really real with you, it's like, well, it's actually caring. If I'm not telling you the truth, it's because I don't care enough to get into it with you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Whereas I think for some people, it's actually the opposite. You know what I mean? Um, no, maybe not. I don't know where I was going with that. But anyway, the point is, um, you know, yeah, if I'm, if I'm, I, I just don't lie a lot. I, I don't. Yeah. Do you have any inner signals like that make you like you're out or something like that and something happens or you notice yourself feeling a certain way and you're like, oh, I'm, I'm not on my, I'm not in my center. You know, or like I'm thinking of the virtue of the four, which is equanimity, you know, and your relationship with that or what makes you notice um, a need to come back to yourself. What, what, um, 
or you even know if that's the right earlier. framing as because i'm coming from an attachment type perspective if it's something opposite for you you know um there are times okay <laughs> sweetie <laughs> um yeah she, she's intrusive she's a six um okay um um what was i gonna say i don't know i think there are times where i get reactive about things and Mm -hmm. I feel this really intense. I, I Okay. If there are situations where I'm even with people that I care about and I feel this sort of like detachment, this extreme, almost sudden, like, I don't know you. I don't. Why am I here? Like this feeling mm -hmm. of, I know if it's somebody that I like actually love and care about, it'll, it'll, I have to, I, I know it'll pass because when I actually yeah. do love people, it's, I keep them forever, but mm -hmm. it is, that's when I know I'm just like, okay, that's I don't that's not healthy that's not the healthy me um that's how I react to a lot of things but if it's somebody that I really care about I don't want to feel that way and so I might just I don't know separate myself for a few minutes or something like that um, but when I was younger I didn't really know how to deal with that feeling um so I would just be when, I don't know I still kind of do this if I'm at like a family function sometimes I just get up and like go outside I just can't be in there um yeah I, again I get and I can't and then I have to like, I, like I, I only have, I have a very small bandwidth for things like that. So sometimes I can't even go back in. Like I just have to leave. Um, but yeah, I've learned that the best thing for me to do is just to separate myself, do something that makes me feel like me again, whatever it might be, like talk to one of my friends or listen to some music and then kind of like go back. Um, mm -hmm. Does that, does that kind of answer your question? It does. Yeah. 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 Um, I have one other thing in the image idea, like, the question is something like, how are you moment to moment navigating the desire to be seen in a particular way? And what I mean is like, um, for, so for me, in a, in, a, in a given social situation, I'm often aware of wanting, want, I was, as a three, I'm wanting to present myself in some kind of light that is attractive to the other person mm -hmm. and i'm curious about your analog for that because it feels like it here's my language for it i'm curious if you if you resonate with it it's like for me as a three there's an outside in kind of thing going on where it's like i'm seeing myself from the other person's eyes mm -hmm. but the idea of what is true for you and that being your compass it's like it's almost like the sense of or, and your your reflex to tell the truth and not to lie it's yeah. like there's some way that if I'm seeing myself and presenting myself as congruent with whatever my inner state is, mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. that's the way that I want to, that I'm wanting to be seen, whether or not it's attractive to the other person or not. Yes, correct. Something um, like that. If the person is someone that I like personally, then I would like mm -hmm. that congruent thing to be attractive to them. Mm -hmm. Otherwise right. I don't care. And and if you do like the person, um, how much like stretch do you have in terms of uh, shifting your image or in do like your adapting. three wing, like adapting? Yeah. Uh, the thing is, like, I'm a really specific person, but I'm also like fairly extroverted and dynamic and I do have a sense of humor and I have actually a lot of interest. So I don't think I have a big stretch, but I do think that if it's somebody that I do like, I probably like them because we have some kind of connection already. So whatever that is, I can center myself in that area for them and, you know, yeah. maybe not give them all of the other stuff up front. Because mm -hmm. that's kind of impossible anyway, right? I don't want to make it sound like I'm saying I have different versions of myself. It still very much is me and the same me that I would show to somebody else. But it's like, I don't know. Like right now, we're talking about the Enneagram. Um, mm -hmm. I'm giving you that that part of me. But this is the same Enneagram me that I would give to anybody else. Um, sure. Mm -hmm. I'm not really stretching, yeah. Yeah. you know. And, you know, sometimes I do stretch a little bit. Sometimes you just have to. But it makes me feel like it's ill. Gross. Like sick. Yeah. And, I, and then yeah. I, I have to leave. Uh, I have to go away, get yeah. out of the space, and I feel shame. Even though what I did probably made people like me more, it feels disgusting. I see. Right. Yeah. 
Um, I feel like we'll probably come to a close soon. Um, but I'm sure. thinking I have one other question about the group. And yeah. are you aware of the level of fascination and fear <laughs> um, that you evoke in the community? Is that true? Like, well, fear is maybe <laughs> no, too, I guess not. too strong of a word. It's more like, it's like fascination and the sense of like, people are, um, or at least my sense of, of it, and this is, uh, I, I don't think it's a projection. It's more like just, I sense it's, I sense a sense of um, people noticing your uh, sharp, pokey disdainfulness and are drawn to it and fascinated by it and want to get close to it but also the closer they, they're afraid of getting poked by it in a sense and right um and because you occupy a position of authority even That's though you great. don't necessarily embody it and kind of dance around the communal space as that <laughs> yeah. there's you know you are one of the leaders of the group right and so and yeah so when the, when people's eyes are upon you then they are yeah fascinated and kind of like scared a little bit or something like that's, that you know that, yeah <laughs> that's interesting no i have absolutely Intimidated, no maybe. idea yeah yeah no and it's um no i to be i think to be honest i people give david and emeka a little bit more attention and maybe it's because they're nicer maybe it's because they're straight i don't know i have no clue but i just i just assumed that i was like the least favorite <laughs> of the three because no no one I don't know. No one. I mean, I'm not doing, I guess it's part of why I wanted to do this interview too, because I'm like, you know what? My face isn't really out there as much as that. Cause they're on the podcast. Um, right. Right. I should just do something where I'm like, you know, no, no, opening up a little. Um, no, I honestly have no clue uh, how people see me or what they think of me. Uh, that's the honest truth. I, I, I've thought about it before, but I think my, yeah, my honest thought was that I was just like, I just don't think, I just assume that people like David and Emeka better. I mean, I think I think people love David. He's a nine. Like, it's really hard not to love David, you know? Um, but, mm -hmm. yeah, I just kind of, I was like, I don't know. People don't hate me. I'm gay. I'm four. Or, or sorry, they people, I don't think they hate me. I just think that maybe they're not as interested because, hmm. I, yeah, no, I, I have no idea. That's yeah, I wonder. Though. It is interesting. I wonder if that's just, yeah. I wonder if that's your projection, too, just as a, maybe. As a withdrawn four. Yeah, right. Because if if I were, if if as a social three, if I'm leading Dark Arts Academy and 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 in some kind of position of authority in a Facebook group, I'm certainly aware of at least right. it's in my consciousness. How am I being perceived right now? Like, what's the group's vibe towards me? Yeah, it's. I mean, it is, but it's not. I don't know. Um, yeah, it's like a. It's almost like a. Um, one foot in one foot out thing or like a, a, a reluctance yeah. to engage with the with the group as a from a place of like this is my place or something like that it's that contained social yeah thing or something i think like that. you know sometimes i'm afraid of how to put this uh I, I always remember this moment i was at uh i was at a restaurant i was alone i was sitting at a bar it's like last winter and the I'd, I've been in there a few times and the, the bartender was really nice and started chatting with me. And I was like, Oh, this is fun. Like, yeah, I don't know. I'm a lot. I like to chat. Like, Oh, sure. Let's, let's go. And then he said one thing that made me think he was disgusting. And I, at that point on, I was like, mm, okay. <laughs> but like I had to finish the conversation, but I remember yeah. thinking, okay, how long did that one last? It was maybe like five minutes of chatting with him, maybe less. And he said it was that he was he was recommending we were talking about shows. He heard me talking about shows on the phone with my friend and asked me if I was a screenwriter. And I was like, no. Um, and then he's like, you know what you need to watch? And he he recommended a show on Netflix that I thought was like complete and utter trash. And like mm -hmm. was this really uh -huh. nice. Six yeah, yeah. And was like started talking about it. And I was like, ah. Uh -huh, right. Uh -huh. There you go. So this is what happens. Yeah. I'm afraid for the most part that I will get into something with someone and then have that feeling and be yeah. disgusted and disappointed. And then I have to cut off and I can't because well, I'm the leader and I don't actually want people to think I'm terrible. Um, mm -hmm. So I, a lot of times just like avoid any interaction with someone until I, f either they've just caught me on a good day or I feel really certain that I won't feel that disgust so quickly. Yes, that I understand. That I understand. that makes me sound worse. That just makes hey guys, I don't talk to you because I'm assuming you're <laughs> shit. 
I mean, it's, I don't, I, it's not, but it's not personal. I just feel like this about everything. Yeah. I feel like this about yeah. the things I like, you know what I mean? It's I mean, just every, it's just the way I see life. Well, to me, this is just, this is what it, it, it means to be um, a frustration type in the heart center. It's, yeah. it's like the expectation of being That's disappointed it. and it's, and it's not personal. And the sense of like when that waiter was talking about that show that you thought was trash and really recommending it and like doubling down, then yeah. that that sense of like this person's inner compass that directs his tastes is so departed from um, what uh, from quality or from yeah I guess I'll use the word depth maybe because I, I associate that word with four yeah. you know it's like this person no longer has the I. I don't trust this person's capacity to relate with me in a way that will actually nourish yeah. me. And I'm embarrassed that I, for even five minutes, thought the opposite. And now I'm yeah, and yeah. now I'm speaking to them. I'm, I'm giving them access to me, and I I shouldn't even be doing that. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Man, I think the the, the four one stem right there is it just adds an extra kick. To oh yeah. That. Yeah, because. I imagine like a four nine stem would be a little bit more forgiving or um, or more like or le less just less severe just severe yeah severe the cutoff is very severe it seems like mm -hmm. yeah it's brittle it's very it's like yes. once it once it breaks it's just it's done yeah because one you know like you use the word at some point in this call about like contamination and I'm like that's yeah that's yeah. very one-ish. and that's true like everything it's everything's a contaminant yeah. a poison and I'm constantly trying to you know, so it's, that's, that's a very one-ish thing too, is that, yeah, when that, the gut boundary gets crossed, like, no, wrong, this goes over here, this goes over here, I don't, like, it's, and I don't even say, the word wrong is difficult because it sounds moralizing, but it's more just like, like a body sense of, like, no, or, yeah. Yes. Um, one other question in this space, I remember when I was watching Dark Arts Academy, um, the one that you did with Gore Vidal, is that how you pronounce his name? I think. Yeah. And, I was, I was, uh, it was the first one that I had seen where you were like, I love this guy. Like, oh yeah, <laughs> the, the, not... you know what I mean? And I was, I was so fascinated by that, that right. you were drawn to, you know, cause he was, he, he has a lot of your qualities of disdain and right, was yeah. just, you know, um, with precision and with a certain wit mm -hmm. was just being really, a, you know, um, acerbic and, uh, dismissive of lots of different things and you were just like oh wow this guy yeah yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah that's rare yeah. um yeah most of the da people we do i i'm repulsed by or again it's just kind of a i'll start off hating there are a couple where i've started off and like i hate this person I hate this person and then they're slowly like you know what yeah it's yeah. actually they're, they've impressed me and like i don't think i hate them anymore it's just it's just an automatic I don't know, people get up in arms about the word hate. I'm not talking about like really damaging hate, like homophobia and like violence. I'm just talking about this kind of, yeah, we use the, the disdain is a good word that yeah. we kind of started to use. I think that really captures it. It's really just this like, oh, no. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the, the way you were responding to Gore Vidal, it's like there was something, some inner quality of him so that his his inner compass that was directing him to be disdainful of this or that thing was mm -hmm. resonating with yours in a sense it was like oh i yeah, I, yeah you uh, that, was, that was my sense of it anyway it's yeah true. for sure yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah well cool um how are you feeling right now and how has this been for you um you know uh it's hard it's this is hard i talking it's interesting because i can sit here and talk shit about any type that i want including four but when you're talking about yourself it is uh you almost like draw a blank you know what i mean like something so you're asking about four stuff i mean you can even keep this in because this is like you're asking me about stuff that i know and i'm like but i can't like you you just you're not designed to see yourself i'm like i'm you know what i mean and then like like when we get off this call i'll be like oh why didn't i say that or like this is the, the better i don't know pattern but it's weird when somebody asks you about one of your own patterns, you almost go blank or something mm -hmm. because your ego is like, I don't like you're watching me. I'm being recorded. I have to say something really raw and vulnerable about something that's actually like really gross, but I don't know if you know what I mean? Like I, I can I, how can I frame this? And then you're like, Oh, is that even authentic? And so on. It's really hard. Um, hmm. This is why, you need other people to type you, you know, somebody who's doesn't care, who isn't invested in, in you emotionally, who just, you know, can watch and observe. 
Um, but yeah, I'm going to watch this back and be like, oh my God, I sounded like crap or I didn't say anything good about four or I, I, I don't know. Um, you know, and, and think later all the things I could have said that would have made more sense. Um, cause I just think it's really hard to talk about, about your own type, you yeah. know? Is, is there anything that comes up for you about being the, the subject of not just like the inner experience of searching for the answers to questions, but just the experience of being um, questioned about yourself, that you are the object of fascination in this situation? It's weird. Uh -huh. um, I'm trying to think of how to answer that question. Um, what comes up? It's I I think... I think my instinct is to hide, to just not want to, right. um, to, yeah. to do the withdrawn thing, to be like, no, you can't have any of this, or you can't come too close to this, or fours mm -hmm. are very guarded. I mean, right. people who know them and are close to them know when things really matter. And it is actually, if I am getting emotional, it's definitely going to be real. And it's very obvious because I'm not a steely person. But most people are not getting close to me. So, but in an interview like this, I have to be real in some way. But that's hard because I'm, because I'm social. So I'm not just looking at you. I'm looking at like everybody who might be watching this. Um, and you know that's difficult because you're like, I don't know which, I don't know who my audience is, and I don't know if I will, I don't know if I care, but I also do. I don't know. Yeah. What is that pressure in this context to be to be real? Like for you could just in the same way that when you did the typing interviews with um, that Dark Arts Academy video where you typed yourself. And oh, yeah. That you, was su you submitted those videos to, I forget what it was, CTI or something. I forget what it was. Yeah, but CT, yeah. Yeah. You, you were doing it, you, you were making fun of yourself for submitting a video and not wanting to do it, but kind of like, okay, I had to participate. Okay, I fucking get it. Right. Mean, but yeah, yeah, but trying to make the, the person who wrote the questions <laughs> realize that they're stupid for writing those questions and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I'm curious yeah. if there's any been anything like that here for you, or if, and I won't be offended if that's true. Oh yeah, I mean sure, yeah yeah. And yeah, again, yeah. it's not personal. It's just yeah yeah yeah. I know it's just the. Man. There is this idea that like if anybody tries to get close to me or understand me, that they're not getting it and they're an idiot. Right. And I know right, that that's right. not true, which is why I'm here. Um, yeah. But I'm. But then. I have to get past all of that so that I can actually answer the question for you because mm -hmm. it's not just about me, but yeah, like you said, I'm the leader of this community. I don't want to, I want to make sure that what I'm saying about myself and about four is going to be correct and illuminating and not make me look like, I don't know, something mm -hmm. else. I don't, I don't care. Like even if someone's like, Oh, he seems like a six, I don't care, but I do want, if somebody's watching this, I want them to learn something about four because that's what we're, that's right, the whole, right. that's our whole business. Right. Um, so I'm like trying to make sure that I'm saying the right thing, but I probably didn't. So I don't mm -hmm. know. Yeah. Well, thanks for doing this. Um, for <laughs> me, this is really this is really fun and and fascinating. And uh, yeah. thanks for letting me kind of try to get in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got a little <laughs> bit in there. I think. I hope. Yeah. I got to watch it again. <laughs> cool. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right, man. Well, thanks a lot. Okay. Thank you.